Hello and welcome to another edition of Campus 360. I am Diana Nuchiga. Coming up in the bulletin, a Accra High Court judge hearing the case against the UTAC strike urges parties in the dispute to settle matter outside court. Meanwhile, it is unclear if universities will be closed as the strike continues into the third week. But the judge decided that um, we should meet in chambers. And also in this package, government has hinted on wide-ranging reforms which will see secondary education extended from three years to six years by merging junior high school and SHS schools. It's not good enough for us to know that students are going to school. We have to ensure that they are producing outcomes. And later in the bulletin, we get interactive with the winners of the Joy Learning Essay Club competition in our News in Focus segment. I would like to say that Joy Learning has made the most impact in my life. These and more in this bulletin. Stay with us. To our very first story, the Labour Division of the Accra High Court has asked the National Labour Commission to settle its dispute with the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, outside court. The NLC sued UTAG, challenging its legitimacy of their strike, which has entered the fourth week. The case was held in chambers on Friday after NLC lawyer Eva Amehe moved the motion for enforcement of its directive for UTAG to call off the strike. Lawyer for UTAG, Kwesi Kelly Delata, briefed the media after the meeting. Today was fixed for the hearing of an application by the National Labor Commission, um, who, or which has come to court, imploring the court to enforce its directives. And again, as you must be aware, that directive was to compel the University Teachers Association of Ghana to call off the strike. So that application was to be heard today, all ready to make legal argument, to canvas legal argument for or against. Um, an order of the court for the enforcement of the directives of the National Labor Commission. But the judge decided that um, we should meet in chambers. And when we went to chambers, the judge decided that uh, we should take another bite at an opportunity to try to settle out of court. So that's what took place today. We made it clear to the judge that the national executive doesn't have the power to call or call off a strike. That decision is solely in the hands of the National Executive Committee and the general membership of the University Teachers Association of Ghana. So we ask for time for the UTAC National Executive to go and hold the necessary consultations um, and then report back to the court on the 10th of February at 1 p.m. So basically that's what happened today. The court has asked both parties to report the outcome of their negotiations on Friday, February 10th, 2022. Well, it's been more than 21 days since the strike left many students stranded in various campuses. Manuel Kranten reports from the University of Ghana. It's the fourth week of that impasse between UTAG members and the government of Ghana. The lecturers are demanding better conditions of service. But government, on the other hand, says it is engaging. While this engagement continues, it's four weeks already with no academic activity on the various university campuses. The last time this happened was in 1995, when the various public universities in Ghana were shut down for close to a year. The same situation is staring us in the face again, begging to repeat itself. Well, I've come to the University of Ghana to speak to some students who are contemplating and considering moving out of campus altogether up until when government settles the issues with UTAC. To my left are Ajubi and Kelly, and my right are Nicholas and Abena. Let me start with you, Kelly. You, you've been on campus all three weeks while your lecturers were on strike. We're in the fourth week. What have you been doing? Um, you, as you know, we come to school for academic activities, but this is the situation where no academic activity is going on at all. One could say, okay, you are in, you are in school with friends, so have group studies. But then we don't have course outlines. We don't have reading materials even. So what do we do? Most of my friends have gone home. Most of my friends are already at home. Most of my friends even come to school at all because they were like, what am I coming to do? And I agree with them. So me, for instance, if by this, the end of this week nothing happens, I'm sure I'll just move home because... I'm just wasting money, and I'm sure when I'm home, there are things that I, would, I wouldn't use money for. 
So that is my 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 solution now, just to go home if the strike is not called off. Well, let me bring in Ajubi into the conversation. Ajubi, get, just get a bit closer. Talk to me about what your own situation has been. What course are you reading? Which level are you in? And have you been in on campus all three weeks? Well, I'm a level 300 student okay. offering geography and history. And since we came to school, it's only one lecturer, I think, who has sent us his course outline. The other courses have not sent us anything. So basically, there's nothing to learn. Being on campus, I feel like I'm wasting time. So I was even thinking about going for an exchange program a year abroad and then come back. Then maybe by the time I return to school, maybe... Um, things will be back on track, I mean, academic-wise, because this is clearly a waste of time. We can't pay huge amounts of fees and hostel fees and you don't teach us. You just leave because of your condition. I understand them as teachers that, okay, you need to, um, you need a better pay because of your job. But, I mean, the government should also think about us students because right now we, we paid and we are ready to learn, but nothing is happening. So, government should listen to UTAC. Um, do you agree with that assertion that government should listen to UTAC regardless of the fact that what UTAC's persistent, uh, you know, absence from class is, is going to affect you? I disagree, you know, because if government does not respond to UTAC the way they want it and uh, they are able to come to an agreement and they say, that, okay, come in late after a month, we'll get back to you. And what if they don't? And it will continue again and continue again. Next year, we'll still be seeing this. So it's, they should just solve it now so that we, in the long term, we won't be going on and on and on with it again. So I think this is the right time for them to settle it. So, yes. And this, this situation is pretty much the same for a lot of your other colleagues. Let me bring in Abna into the conversation. Abna, people are, you know, going home. Their parents, you know, giving them pressure to come back home. Are your parents asking you to come back home? Same pressure, pressure everywhere, especially regarding the um, finance involved because people, parents uh, made an agreement with their wards that after every two weeks or after every month, I am going to send you this amount of money. But this is a case where you've been in school for about three weeks, you call home to ask for money and they tell you, what have you used the money for? After all, you're not learning. And so that's the situation that students have had to deal with over the last three weeks. And so, yes, most students are considering going. Myself, I'm considering going home because I was on campus simply because most of my colleagues who are in the same research group with for our final year proposal uh, on campus and then we all agree that we could work on our final year projects but <laughs> unfortunately for us when we send our lecturer you know messages with regards to our research there's no response and the message is loud and clear that we are on strike and so I can't respond to your questions on your research as well so I think the best decision at the moment especially when parents have also decided not to give their awards money is to go home. At the University of Cape Coast students have formed study groups to cope with the mechanism. Here on the campus of the University of Cape Coast, the campus is completely deserted. Uh, most of the students have left and they are home now. Others are contemplating leaving because they are doing virtually nothing on campus. Most of them complain that they are exhausting, gradually exhausting their full staff and they fear that if they do not go home, they might completely spend every money that uh, was given to them by their parents. For uh, the university management, what they have done is to open the university's main library very early. The departmental library and the hall libraries have also been open. Some of the students have been utilizing this opportunity. They've been going there to read. Others are also exploring the option of forming groups. So others have actually formed groups and um, they have sought the assistance of some of their seniors to assist them in going through some of the materials they will be using during the semester. For the freshmen and, and women on campus, uh, their wish was that they would have tasted uh, lecturing by now because they have been um, started or they have been accustomed to teaching in the senior high schools, but that hasn't been the case. They are frustrated, they are dejected, they are like a flock of sheep without a shepherd, and they do not know what to do. We are very, very we are begging, we are bleeding. It's not easy for us here. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I can say. This is deserted. A lot of your guys are going home. Yes. Some have not even come at all. Yes. I mean, what are you contemplating doing? Mm, currently, we, we, are forming a, we, have, we are forming a group studies. Yeah, yeah. You, by medical science, we have a group study section in a group. So every day, in the hours, we form, we try to meet twice or three hours. Yeah, and we start the, maybe the, the courses that we are studying uh, so that we, we took some slide for our seniors then they will teach us more small showing one or two things uh, so that we have to do before the lecture comes and come and teach us yeah so we're hoping that you catch up with some small small things so that the lectures come 
flow, everything flow. As I'm speaking to you, uh, day in, day out, we are spending. And you came with a budget. Your parents have planned that this is a period that you are supposed to stay on campus. And this is the uh, money that you are expected to use. And as as now, nothing is going on. We are spending and it is uh, actually affecting us. So with time, if the strike is not coming to an end, we will surely go home. So we are appealing to government that uh, it should listen to their concern and attend to them so that they will come and continue with us. The plea of the student here is that government should immediately, as a matter of necessity, sit down with the university lecturers and then talk about uh, their issues so that they would return to the classroom. Meanwhile, the National Union of Ghana Students has urged the National Labor Commission to withdraw the case against the UTAG and resume negotiations. President of the Union, Emmanuel Boache Yadom, addressed the news conference in Accra this week. We are hereby making the following recommendations to both parties. A. Labor Commission must, as a matter of urgency, withdraw court case against UTAG. B. UTAG, on the other hand, should also take steps to call off strike and return to negotiations. C. Both parties must enter into negotiations without any entrenched position. D. Government should, a matter, uh, government should, as a matter of agency, expedite the implementation of the labor market survey. And lastly, both parties must agree to a time frame and rules of engagement must be respected by both parties as well. We seize this opportunity to inform our colleague students that throughout the strike, we've been engaging all stakeholders, both the side of government, that is Ministry of Labor and Employment, Labor Commission, Fair Wages, Ministry of Education, and UTAG executives, both national and local, to mediate the issues. We therefore urge all students to remain calm as we do our very best to appeal to both parties involved to resolve this impasse. It is our fervent hope and prayer that our good Lord touches and softens the heart of both parties involved to resolve issues amicably without thought of re uh, recurring any time soon. Long live Ghana, long live Ghanaian student, long live Nooks. Aluta Continua, Victoria Aceta. He added that demonstration will be the last resort because that is not what students wish for. Just as we've always been communicating on our letterhead, um, if there is anything of that sort, it will officially come from us. As we speak now, we have no plans on going on any demonstration. We've not sanctioned any demonstration. So on this note, we would give a word of caution to our colleague students that are having that in mind or that are propagating this sort of information. Um, they should be very watchful of whatever actions that they go out there to do. Now, the National Teaching Council says the teacher licensure exams will soon move towards a blend of professional and competency of teachers. According to the council, numeracy and literacy will be taken off the exams and students will be examined in both professionalism and competence in their major subject areas. Prince Apia reports. Ghana Teacher Licensure Examination, GTLE, and Ghana Basic Education and Skills Test, GBEST, since 2018, has conducted seven successive examinations. For the past three years, 128,493 candidates have sat the exams. And out of this, 88,061, which constitutes 69%, have passed. This has called for reforms. Dr. Christian Adepoko is the registrar for the National Teaching Council. The existing system of licensure examination, people writing numeracy and literacy at the exit point, we are bringing numeracy and literacy to the entrance point. So you pass numeracy and literacy before you enter college. At the exit point, you would have gone through pedagogy, and you have gone through extensive training in content in the, as far as your major area is concerned. So we we test you in those two areas. So this is the major reform we are bringing to ensure that we stay off the, 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 the problem of getting people who do not really qualify 
going through training for four years and becoming a burden on everybody. He says these three new reforms will adjust Mr. Simons of teachers. Somebody goes to specialize in Ghanaian language, let's say Chi, then he goes to a school, there is no English teacher, so the person is assigned to teach English language. We have not tested the person to see whether the person can really deliver or not. The fact that the person has gone to do Chi and probably has done some linguistics, we think that the person can teach. And that is what this reform is supposed to streamline. So you've gone to do Ghanaian language. You think that you can teach English. We will not stop you. But before you can do that, you have to go and write the Lancentia in that specialized area. If you're able to pass, then we will issue you a license that, yes, even though you trained in this, you are capable of handling this one. So we give you a license to that in addition. Whether Ghana moves forwards or backwards depends on the training that we give to our teachers. Anis Hafar is the chairman of the council. In some countries, like Finland, it's more difficult to get into the school of education than to get into medical school or an engineering school because this is where you begin to mold minds right from the beginning. So this is the importance that we are now beginning to uh, assert in terms of the kind of people that we bring in. The meeting attracted vice chancellors, representatives from teacher training institutions and the Ministry of Education. Education Minister Dr. Ose Duchum is impressed with the move by NTC. The direction you are taking is going to enable us to create a common platform. So it will not be said that you did your degree at Jackson. Therefore, I don't trust you. And let them justify their inclusion by passing the exam. So I'm so excited. Meanwhile, there is also teacher education accreditation framework being developed to enable the National Teaching Council carry out its accreditation functions. Officials say it will ensure a two-stage accreditation of institutions and programs. The council says it will be visiting various teacher education institutions to enforce its accreditation mandate. The national standardized test, which was organized last year for primary four pupils, has now been extended to primaries two and six. Education Minister Dr. Yao Ose Iduchu, who announced this, added that this is to evaluate learning outcomes at the basic level. He's been addressing the media on the issue. So when we hear us talking about the national standardized test, it's to enable the country to know how well our students are doing and not wait till 11 years. So this year we did the first national standardized test. Close to 500,000 students participated in the exams. The results will be coming out soon to tell us how well our primary four students are doing. This academic year, we are going to assess primary two students, we we'll assess primary four students, and we we'll assess primary six students. The goal is for us to know how well the students are doing, then prescribe intervention the year after the exams is administered. The students who took the fourth grade exams this year, when the results come, their parents are going to get copies of the results. It will break it down for the parent to know whether my child is doing well in fractions, algebra, decimals. And then that parent has something in his hand or her hand to be able to engage with the teacher and say, how can my son do well? How can my daughter do well? So the fifth year or fifth grade or fifth at uh, the primary five become an intervention year. Then we test them again in primary six and say, did the intervention work or did not work? For the first time, we're going to have a set of data that will enable us to really prescribe intervention for our schools and begin to look at how we turn around our schools. It's not good enough for us to have a school system and education system it's not good enough for us to know that students are going to school. We have to ensure that they are producing outcomes. Education think tank Africa Education Watch has praised the government's proposal to extend the secondary education from three years to six years. There's more in the following report. Minister of Education Dr. Yao Ose Iduchum, in a press briefing addressing the media, introduced some measures to reform the education sector. According to him, Secondary education in Ghana will, from 2023, cover a period of six years instead of three. That is merging both GHS and SHS. According to the minister, these are part of reforms to transform the country's secondary education, with science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM. 
Reacting to this, educationist at the Africa Education Watch, Mr. Divine Pe, says this is a brilliant idea because the JHS is the weakest link in our educational sector, hence needs to be strengthened. Junior high school education as also secondary education. So in this case, you will have it the junior high school as a lower secondary education and the senior high school as a upper secondary education. And therefore the curriculum for the two levels would have been in tandem. And once you begin to prepare students for senior high school, the preparation would have been from the junior high school with the content aligned to that the senior high school so that progression can be easier in terms of knowledge attainment. So basically that's what the minister is intending to do. And that's a brilliant, it's a world welcome because if you look at it, Virginia High School has always been a weakest link in our educational system and we need to strengthen it now. And that concept to have the Virginia High School and with the senior school, which is the original plan, is much work. Divide also charged the government to introduce STEM at the basic level. This, according to him, will prepare students at the higher level. How are you preparing the basic level to respond to this STEM program? So we believe that if the attention is not on the basic education to strengthen STEM participation at that level, you can build 20 STEM centers. You can build one STEM academy. You can develop career pathway for nine science the students so that they can also progress to a science uh, program at a tertiary level. You can do all that to increase participation at a senior high school level. But if you don't come to the basic school level, then you are not going to the interest of those that will even get to the senior high school in a few schools. So I am just uh, not okay that we are not getting much response to the STEM development at the basic school level. All attention now right now seems to be at the, uh, the, the senior high school yeah, level yeah. and then the tertiary, tertiary level. level. We understand that will be Some head teachers and students embrace the idea of the introduction of the pre-engineering program, a one-year course for students with non-science background after SHS. The perception that people have about visual arts student that uh, we packed all our a non-performing student at the visual arts department is completely wrong because if we give them training if we introduce STEM education to the department uh, we will see that it will improve their performance and therefore if they get to the universities to pursue engineering they will work if you all come to appreciate the fact that science is not only physics chemistry biology in mass and that music french languages is also science then what the child is able to do is what we will offer. And meanwhile, the sector and uh, secondary education sector and uh, subject combination is so broad and perverse situated for everybody to benefit. It would be incredible to see a visual arts student being able to do elective math and progress to that extent of having to do engineering. Because no, nowadays it seems like there's no creativity in engineering whatsoever. So having them to be broad and actually like have experience in all these areas and like let like the people particip like participate in all these things, it would be amazing. We are very happy with the government's decision because the GES or LMC, the government, will give visual arts students the opportunity to express our ideas and also give us the chance to also explore our knowledge in the engineering sector. The Joy Learning Essay Club Christmas edition finally ended on Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, with right now and now Deborah emerging winners of the competition for the JHS and SHS category, respectively. There's more in the following report. After a tight competition, the Joy Learning Essay Club Christmas edition just ended with Bright Na, emerging winner at the SHS level, and Na Deborah from the JHS category. After receiving over 300 essays, and after carefully marking the essays, emerged our 10 finalists who had to solicit for votes to win the essay. Voting was in two folds, from our lovely audience at home and our examiners. Chief examiner for the competition, Christian Ohene Amwako explained how the essays were marked. I am delighted as always to be in your homes, on your television screens and everywhere you are. As usual, your chief examiner, A.C. Ohene. I am particularly delighted 
to be greeting the 250 plus young men and women who put in the bid on our seventh test that basically asked a memorable trip a memorable christmas trip i had with my family i am proud once again to see that continually the output of our applicants keep rising and this time around at this seventh edition the competition was so keen that the very 10 best out of the 250 plus the they were just packed at the top can you imagine that whereas the very first the very best picked 75 percent the second had 74 72 71 71 69 percent 68 68 and 68 percent the first 10 were between 75 and 68 percent this is worth commending and we say are you cool to all of you 10 top best and indeed those that were packed in the middle and even those that made relatively low mark good to note that overwhelming majority had 50 plus which shows that they are now being more careful more meticulous in terms of the grammar in terms of the organization in terms of the actual content and together with the Ghana Education Service, together with the Ministry of Education, together with Nation Ghana, Mother Ghana, we are proud to say that we are helping in the education, not only in English language, but indeed in the other critical subjects, including the core subjects in the basic school, the core subjects in the secondary school. We are very happy and we can only promise ourselves and promise parents teachers, school managers, and students that are on campuses, students that have just finished college and they are at, at, at home, those that have finished as, uh, senior high schools, technical schools, and they are home, that are part and fantastic part of this program, that this year is going to be more insightful. This year is going to be more educative. This year is going to be more participatory where you play leading roles in joy learning. Together, we make Ghana better. Together, we learn more. And together, we develop ourselves and Mother Ghana and Africa at large. We're most grateful, and we only welcome you to 2022 with great expectations. Channel manager Nana Isidu also had a special message for our 10 finalists before the grand finale. Fellow learners, Please allow me to wish you all a belated Happy New Year of joyous learning and many academic successes. As always, I was highly impressed with the many essays we received from you all and as usual, you continue to prove to me and the entire Joy Learning team that our efforts are not in vain. This year, Joy Learning, your ultimate classroom on TV, will be reaching you with many interesting contents for your viewing pleasure. And I'll urge you all to continue to follow us on TV and all the social media handles. Before I take my leave, I would like to take the singular honor of congratulating all of you, especially our 10 gallon finalists of the December 2021 contest. And I wish you all the best of luck next time. Thank you. At a final virtual ceremony on Wednesday, 2nd February 2022, to announce the winner of the Christmas edition of the Joy Letter Essay Competition, Nan Deborah from W Press BJHS emerged the winner for the JHS category and right now from Don Puasi Senior High School for the JHS category. They both had this to say. Hi, greetings to everyone. Nahayel Begre Deborah is my name, a student of YWPSB JHS Form 2. I want to seize this opportunity to say thank you to all those who spend their time to vote for me. I would like to recommend Joy Learning as a club to all my friends. Since I've started watching Joy Learning, I've learned a lot and I've improved in my academic studies, especially the English language. I would like to recommend Joy Learning to all of you. Joy Learning, keep learning. Apple for Dos! Apple for Dos! Apple for My name is Nabright, a former student of Don Quasi Senior High School, Standing General Arts. 
I want to first of all say a very big thank you to the Almighty God and the Joy Learning Center for the opportunity granted me and all other students to demonstrate our essay writing abilities and also for taking it upon themselves to teach all subjects on their channel. Secondly, with a grateful heart, I want to say a very big thank you to all those who voted for me, especially my family, friends, students, old students, and all entire teaching staff of the Quasi Senior High School. And how would I forget the members of Voice of Anasi Mind? I wouldn't have made it this far if not for you. I say God bless you all. Finally, I will entreat all students to join the Joy Learning Channel for really exciting educational programs. Joy Learning! Now let's take a breather. We'll be back with our news in focus segment.